Okay, welcome to section 4.8. Uh, the big picture on 4.8 is we're going to start to find imaginary solutions to quadratic equations, but uh, we got a long ways to go, and we're going to start with just a bunch of stuff about like imaginary numbers. All right, so quick review is if uh, sample problems showing up here for doing our quadratic formula, we would do some simplest radical form um, when answering this. So we talked about that where we could split the square root of 98 into 49 and 2 over 2, and then we'd end up with like 3 plus or minus 7 square roots 2 over 2. Okay, and that would be our two answers in simplest radical form to um, that particular quadratic. All right, I already, you know, I just started the formula there, and that that's what it looked like. All right, so what it's going to look like with imaginary is it's going to be the same type of idea except. Underneath the check mark we talked about in the last section, there's no real answers if you get a negative number underneath the check mark. Okay, uh, so there's no real answers, but there are actually imaginary answers. So the big picture on what we're going to do with these imaginary numbers is learn how to handle um, situations like this, and we'll actually figure out by the end of this, you hopefully will know to be able to put this in simplest radical form and know that um, the imaginary answers to this are 3 plus or minus 7i square root of 2 over 2. All right, so that's kind of where we're going. Uh, but for now, we're going to start with just, hey, what is this imaginary number? Um, and it relates to these, these square root of negative numbers. Okay, so you want to write down our goal. Um, today, we're going to identify imaginary numbers. And then in this lesson, uh, we are going to add, subtract, and multiply with imaginary numbers. Um, we'll do divide in, in the next, next lesson. Okay, so the next part you don't have to write down. I get the goal down here, but then really uh, just what an imaginary number is, is they're numbers that have I in them. So in our examples here, these first two aren't imaginary, but the second two are. Um, and they're just I. They involve I, and we'll talk about what that means. And then the kind of the second part will be uh, we'll learn how to like add them together, multiply them, and then ultimately later on we'll learn how to, to divide with imaginary. Okay, so here's some stuff for sure to get in your notes. What is an imaginary number? Okay, and so an imaginary number is uh, I. Okay, and a lot of times letters stand for a variable in math, like X or Y, but I is sort of like pi, where it stands for a specific number, right? Pi is, you know, 3.14 or whatever, dot, 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 and I stands for a specific number like that, uh, and I stands for specifically the square root of negative 1. Okay, so definitely get that down in the notes. And then this will actually matter if I is the square root of negative 1, then when we square I, we're going to square the square root of negative 1, and the square root and the square cancel out and just give us 1. Okay, so this is kind of a little fact that's really useful to know, is that when you have uh, I squared, that comes out to be 1, negative 1. Okay, so imaginary number is I, and it's just defined as square root negative 1. Okay, so the reason we have it is it one of the reasons we have I is it allows us to um, do square root of negative numbers. So previously, you know, when we square solve this question, we could square root both sides and get plus or minus 5. But we weren't able to handle situations where we'd square root and we were doing the square root of negative 25. All right, and so I allows us to answer this, and we'll actually find that this is going to be plus or minus the square root of 5i. All right, so another way to think of imaginary numbers is they allow us to do the square root of negative numbers. Okay, so simplifying a radicals, um, negative square roots, and I'm going to do the first example with you, so if you want to copy these down and you can kind of fill them in as we go. So square root of negative 49, um, the way to simplify it, or the way I think about it, is I pull off the negative part on its own. All right, because these two things multiply to negative 49, so that's, that's legal math. And then the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of negative 1, that's our definition for i. So the square root of negative 49 is 7i, or technically it's plus or minus 7i, but to keep it simple, we'll just call it 7i. All right, and if you want to do something like 40, we want to simplify that. Um, same way, I would start the same way, or pull off the negative part, which will become the square root of 40 with an i on the end. 
And then we do our simplest radical form similar to before, where square root of 40 splits to 4 times 10. And so our answer is similar to before. It's 2 square roots of 10, but we have a times i on the end because it's a negative square root. It's a goofy looking i. Maybe we'll clean it up a little bit. Last one. Just pull off the negative uh, one part. And square root of 5 really doesn't simplify, so we have square root of 5 times i. Okay, so when you do simplest radical form with imaginary, you just pull the negative part out. So hopefully you've got those in your notes. One of my all-time favorite math jokes, this is a student told me this. So let's see if you can figure this out. How is my girlfriend like the square root of negative 100? Drum roll, please. Our answer is she's a perfect 10 and imaginary, right? So this actually simplifies to 10i. So my girlfriend is a perfect 10, but imaginary. Hilarious, hilarious. I'm envisioning tons of laughter at this point in the video. Okay, so another thing you might want to copy real down real quick in the notes is imaginary numbers can have a real part and an imaginary part. And what we're going to do next is add two uh, imaginary numbers together, and it's super straightforward. So here's an imaginary number that had a real part and an imaginary part. If we take a second imaginary number, just making these up, that has a real and imaginary part, when you add them together, you just combine the real parts, combine the imaginary parts, and that's your answer. All right, so it's pretty straightforward to add or subtract. I'm going to do these ones with you quick, and then I'm going to have you try a couple on your own in, uh, in the notes. When you're adding, subtracting, just, again, combine the real and the imaginary parts. So the 7 and the minus 3, those are the real parts. And then we're adding uh, minus 2i and plus 1i. All right, and so we'll end up with negative 1i or just negative i. Subtraction, just be uh, careful with subtraction. So in this case, we have the real parts. We're just going to subtract those, 8 minus 8. So we have 0 for our real part. But the i's be careful, it's 6i, take away negative 6i, so we should get 12i there, because it'll turn into an add. So our answer there is 0 plus 12i. Alright, here's two for you to try in your notes. Give them a shot. Okay, so you can check your answers with mine. The first one is subtract, so it's 1 minus 3 negative 2 for the real part, and then it is 5i take away negative 2i, so that'll become a plus, and so the imaginary part is 7i. Okay, addition, again, these are actually a little bit easier, so we'll just do negative 3 plus 3, so that's 0, and then 9i plus positive 9i gives us 18i. All right, that is it for addition and subtraction. Um, next comes the multiply. This will be the last part of this lesson, is to be able to multiply two imaginary numbers together. Uh, so you basically need to distribute. Like on this first question here, you'll do distributive property. And on the second one, uh, you'll just FOIL down here. And one of the keys to this is anytime you have an i times i, that's going to be i squared. And in our previous notes, we talked about i squared is negative 1. So that's going to come up a bunch in these questions, where anytime you get i squared, you're going to replace it with the number negative 1. Again, uh, I'm going to, if you just want to watch these two and then try the next two in your notes, that'll work just fine. So this first example, I'm just going to distribute. So multiply those together, and it's negative 15 times i. And then we'll have positive 6, 3 times 2, i times i is i squared. Not quite done, because again, anytime you have i squared in the problem, that is equal to negative 1. 
going to replace the i squared then with negative 1 and keep simplifying. So we end up with 6 times negative 1. And so our final answer would be negative 15i and then a minus 6 when you multiply the 6 and negative 1. Okay, so second example, when you multiply two binomials like this, you just FOIL. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8, first 2. The outer 2, 2 times 5i is just 10i. Negative 3i times 4i is minus 12i. Negative 3i times positive 5i is going to be negative 15i squared. All right, and then we just got to clean this up a little bit. So I bet you can already tell in the middle, those are going to combine to negative 2i. And then in the back again, anytime you have i squared, that's going to be negative 1. So we're going to end up with a minus negative 15, which becomes a plus. So we have 8 plus negative 2i plus 15. And then the 8 and the 15 can combine 23 plus negative 2i. Okay, so that one, a little more work, but you just FOIL and then um, simplify it from there. Okay, so here's two sample questions for you to try. All right, so you can check your answers, make sure we're okay. First one here, just do 7 times 3 is 21, and i times i is i squared. And again, i squared is negative 1, so I'm going to replace i squared with negative 1, and this cleans up all the way to negative 21. Foiling on the second one, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times negative 5i, 5i times 4. And then 5i times negative 5i will be negative 25i squared. Some kind of magic happens here. The, the negative 20 and the positive 20i's cancel out. So it's just 16. And then we're going to have minus negative 25 because i squared is negative 1. So it becomes minus negative 25. 16 plus 25 minus a negative. And so our final answer is 41. Okay, so this is the homework on imaginary numbers. And there'll be some multiply ones, there'll be some add, some subtract ones. Um, good luck.